Hey, Kids Cook Real Food, Katie Kimball here. And you know, we at Kids Cook Real Food really believe that the most powerful way to show kids that they matter, to teach them that, that they can make a difference in the world is to get them in the kitchen and teach them to cook. And we talk about building life skills and character traits and how all that can happen in the kitchen as a family. And you know, some of those good positive traits we wanna build in our kids are things like setting goals, the value of hard work, and learning from failure. And I'm super excited. You might even say I'm gonna flip with excitement over our guest today. I get to interview Shannon Miller, who if you're in my generation, you might recognize that name as a gold medal gymnast from the 1996 Olympics. Thank you so much for being here, Shannon. Absolutely, thank you. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't recognize the name, let me just catch you up on who we're talking to today and why. Shannon Miller is a seven-time Olympic medalist. That's the record for America and has over 100 national competition medals in gymnastics as well, more than half the gold kind. And people, again, in our generation certainly remember the magnificent seven, the team gold winners in the 96 games, where Shannon captured the first balance beam gold an American had ever achieved. She's no stranger to hard work and success, obviously. And she went on after gymnastics to study marketing and entrepreneurship and even earn her law degree from Boston College. Then life got a little crazier. She had her first baby in 2009, launched her company, Shannon Miller Lifestyle, Health and Fitness for Women in 2010, and in 2011 was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. That's a full plate and that's plenty of challenges, but Shannon used her Olympic grit to triumph in all the areas, had another child in 2013, and wrote a book to inspire others to overcome their own personal challenges. So today, super pumped, we get to talk about mindset and goal setting and how parents can really encourage a gold medal mindset in your children, whether they're into athletics or not. So again, thank you for being here, Shannon. Absolutely, thanks for having me. So your life experience is vast, very unlike anything probably most of us listening have lived. And we'll have some deep stuff to talk about today, but I want to start out with something a little more fun. Can you tell us about competing in Olympic gymnastics, like a little bat behind the scenes thing that we wouldn't expect? <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, I don't know if there's much left for behind the scenes, but, um, you know, competing in gymnastics was such an incredible experience for me. I kind of fell into the sport when I was five. My parents got tired of us jumping on their furniture and uh, and getting hurt. So um, they put us in gymnastics and I just fell in love. And, and kind of over the years, I just kind of moved up and moved up. And all of a sudden, the next goal was to try to make the Olympic team. And, um, you know, I think there's just something about putting on the red, white, and blue and going and competing for something that's so much bigger than yourself. Um, especially at such a young age. It's just so amazing. And, um, you know, while I think min millions of people watched the 1996 Olympics, certainly um, from Atlanta, it was amazing to compete on home soil with that team. It was just such an incredible time. And then to win gold was <laughs> exceptional. But um, but I think there's probably a few things um, that people didn't see. I think there's one that I come back to often because it's so silly to me and made such a big impact on me, but no one else in the world could even know it happened. Um, I was on beam for the first of a series of competitions. You know, it's a, it's a two week competition. Sure. So I was on beam for the first time and I was sitting on the beam ready for a move that we call a shoulder roll. So you literally roll on your shoulder over the beam. So you're right close to the beam. And I got ready to go. I was a wee bit nervous anyway. And I looked down at the beam and there's a fly on the beam, a, a fly right on the beam where I'm supposed to have my, my face right there. And um, I had to kind of make a snap decision right then. Am I willing to squish the bug? And uh, here I am thinking, I have trained this routine thousands upon thousands of times in every scenario I could think of except a bug on the beam. And right. um, we both made it out okay. But, uh, but it was just that moment in time where you feel like I've trained 10 years for this moment how is it possible <laughs> there's a fly right where I need to be? Yeah, to be but, surprised. And of course, you were in high school, so not exactly, you know, well experienced <laughs> in dealing with everything life can throw at you. Well, oh, you know, it's, it's that one, it's that fly in your soup kind of mentality. Okay, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to react? And, and I think, you know, you take that with you in life, too. There's going to be lots of fly flies in your soup, um, so to speak, as a parent, as, uh, you know, a worker, as a, an athlete. There's always going to be something that you didn't prepare for. So then how are you going to react to it? 
Absolutely. Well, and we're definitely talking to parents. We've got an audience of parents who just really want to raise great kids. And you're a mom, too. How did having kids change the way you balance life? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if there's actually balance as a parent. <laughs> it's, I think, more um, setting goals and then trying to do everything you can um, to get organized and then try your best to live in each moment uh, to the, the, the best of your ability. Um, I think for me, you know, looking back, people ask me about balancing and how incredible and, and difficult it must have been to balance gymnastics when I was younger. And I think, well, that was the easy part. I had gymnastics and school. Mm -hmm. And that was, <laughs> and then I had a mom and dad that, you know, helped me with everything else. Well, in life, you don't get that. You get to be in charge of everyone else and your job and keeping the house going and, and everything else. So um, for me, I look less at um, balance and more at my priority list. So on any given day, that might change. My priority one day may be, to get a proposal in, and, and that's that's the goal. And the next day, it might be, you know what, I had a proposal due yesterday, so today is all about the kids, boom. Um, but I think it's less about um, trying to do a little bit of everything and trying to just do a few things really well. That's good for a lot of us parents to remember. We definitely can't do it all, all the time. Uh, Shannon, you talk a lot about the gold medal mindset. Obviously, as someone who's actually won a gold medal and worked hard enough to do that. You know a little bit about that. So what do you define a gold medal mindset as and how can we parents of non-Olympians foster that in our children? You know, I think for me, and of course I've, I had to name it the gold medal mindset because of course, but um, you know, to me, there's so many amazing lessons that we learn through sports, whether you're an Olympian or a college athlete or professional, whatever area you did sport in, you probably learn some of these lessons. And I think we forget them over time and we forget to apply them to everyday life. And so for me, I kind of went back and um, listed out and looked at what are those things that really helped me in sport that I can then apply to other areas of my life. And that became my gold medal mindset. And those are things like setting goals. In our lives, we have to constantly set goals. And especially as parents. So, you know, you could look at it as a to-do list. But it's also goal setting. It's, it's going above and beyond and then figuring out a plan of attack to get to that ultimate goal. Um, the importance of a positive attitude. And again, this goes back to, you know, talking with my children about you cannot control how uh, what happens in every situation. You cannot control how other people act in every situation. You can control how you react to any given situation. And so I think about that in in that way of kind of thinking about a positive attitude and trying to take things that happen that are negative or um, things that we say to ourselves sometimes that are negative. I can't do it. I'm not um, talented enough. I'm not strong enough. You know, whatever that is and turn that around. I'm not strong enough yet. Or maybe, you know what, I'm working on my strength, but I am a really hard worker. You know, whatever it is to change the dynamic to a more positive space. Um, things like, and I, we won't have time to go through every portion of it but um, I think teamwork is a really important one because I think a lot of times we understand team as an athlete and then when you get out in the real world you forget that you have all of these teammates around you all of these resources that we can rely on especially as parents we don't have to do it all all of the time because we have other parents and other folks that are willing to pitch in and help out especially if you're going through a tough time and and I learned that firsthand going through a cancer diagnosis. And it was hard for me to accept help at, at first. <laughs> and then I got easier to accept the help. But understanding that, you know, getting to that end goal doesn't mean that you have to necessarily do it all yourself. In fact, sometimes it's even better to surround yourself with um, people that, that know different areas or know different areas better to help you get closer to that goal a little faster. And then the last thing I would just say um, is that commitment to excellence. And for me, it's really important that my kids understand that I don't expect perfection. I do expect, as my parents did, that you give it your best shot. That you, that you try your hardest. You know, if you don't get all your math homework correct, not a problem. It's a learning experience. And sometimes you have to fail to learn, and that's totally fine. But if you missed them because you're all goofing off, not paying attention, well, then we need to have a little talk about paying attention and in really giving something our 100% effort. 
Yeah, definitely. Okay, so setting goals. You said um, good attitude, positive attitude, teamwork, and commitment, commitment to excellence. Great. Well, obviously, if any goals are in the kitchen, kids cook real food as the teammate, and we're raising the bar high, getting those kids vegetables. I always say raise the bar, expect your children to eat their vegetables. Um, what are some examples of goals you set as a mom, like in your household, either for yourself or for your kids, that maybe can inspire other moms to raise amazing human beings? <laughs> um I have a difficult time setting goals for myself as a mom, and I'm probably not the only mother out there that has this issue, um, because I feel like we set the goals so high for ourselves that then we feel bad when we don't reach them <laughs> all of the time. And it's not us that you know, we can't do everything for our child. We, ultimately, we have to teach our children to do for themselves. And so it's, it's a weird so I think for me, instead of setting goals for me as a parent, I set um, kind of ideas of what I think that they should be setting goals for. And I help talk them through what are your goals? What are the things you want to accomplish? And, and they're not big goals. I mean, my kids are five and eight. So we're not talking about yearly goals. We're talking about, hey, what do you want to accomplish this week? Or, or maybe even just for my five-year-old, what are the things you want to do today? Mm -hmm. And so things we kind of talk about, it's, it's actually three things, is we really talk often about the importance of three things each day. One is to laugh. Now, you, sh you should laugh every day. And the second is to learn something new. I mean, especially children, but adults too. We should be able to learn something new each and every day. And so I love when they come home from school and they ask me what I learned today. And I have to be ready to tell them. <laughs> and then the third thing is to say something kind to someone else. I think every day we can find someone that needs a kind word or if they don't even have to need it, just say something kind to someone else. And you never know as an adult or as a child when you're talking with someone that in that moment, they just needed that pick me up. They just needed to hear something kind. It might um, give them hope. It might help them keep moving forward or try a little bit harder, whatever that is. So those are three things that we talk about as far as goals for the day. And then we start to talk a little bit about other goals um, for them individually and what they might want to achieve. But we try to stay away from goals of winning. Um, and I'll give you a short example of this. I took my son to a duathlon. So it was running and biking. It's the first time that I couldn't be with him on the, on the course. And so I was waiting and waiting and I was wondering, you know, he, he doesn't run slow. And so when he wasn't coming through, I'm kind of wondering if he, took a wrong turn or if he got injured. And so starting to get nervous and about that time he came up and, and then I saw him stop in the middle of the road and look behind him and he was just standing there. And so finally when he finished the race, um, he did not come in <laughs> anywhere near first. And, um, and so we, he finally got in and he said, well, did I win? And I said, well, um, you, you did not come in first, but what, is, what was your goal? What, what were you trying to achieve? when you went into the race. And he said, well, I wanted to make friends. And I said, oh, well, did you make friends? And he said, yes, that's who I was waiting for. I was waiting so he could, we could run together. And I thought, yeah, you won. You, you accomplished what you set out to do. That was your goal. And so we kind of talked through the importance of not just trying to focus on winning um, all of the time, or at least focus on what winning means to us. Mm -hmm. We definitely need a little more of that in our culture for sure. And you know we can apply that in academics too, that we're not focused on the grade, we're focused on the learning and the process and, may, and learning from failure if that's what it takes. Um, I love that, I love that you're having your kids set goals and those, those parameters that are not measurable really, saying kind things and laughing. I mean they're measurable, yes or no, but they're not, yeah, it's I, not a scale, it's not I graded. Do, in, and I do believe in measurable goals, absolutely, because I think it's hard to set goals um, even for, for us, for, for moms, and you set your goal of, I want to be healthy. Well, it's hard to be healthy without knowing what that means to you. So I think it's important to set a goal that is measurable, but that really pertains to you personally. It's not your neighbor's goal. It's not someone else's child's goal. It's what is, what is the goal for you and really think about it, um, so that you can create those, um, the measurability. So you can kind of check yourself to see if you're working your way up to accomplishing that goal. Yeah, that's great. Now, your book is, I feel like it's a little bit related to the conversation we've been having. The title is, It's Not About Perfect. What does that mean? 
I mean, you know, I was I was going through trying desperately to, to figure out a good title. And um, I had written this book and it was really um, supposed it, it turned out more of a memoir, which I did not. In, I did not imagine it was going to be that I really wanted it. Self-help genre, the lessons I learned through sport that helped me during my cancer journey. Um, but when I got finished, uh, there was a lot more gymnastics in it and everything else. And I couldn't figure out what title. And then I was talking with a friend and we were just going through some different things and it just kind of popped out. You know, it's just, it, it's not about winning. It's not about perfect. And she said, that's your title. It's awesome. not about perfect. And for me, you know, gymnastics in many ways was about perfection, you know, the perfect toe point and the perfect landing. And, and you're always striving for perfection. And I was never competing against other athletes. I was competing against the 10-0, how close could I get to that perfect 10? And that drove me. But I think what you find in, in real life is that it isn't about perfect. And it really wasn't in gymnastics because you have to fall so many times in order to finally get right. That only looking back do you realize how much it's not about perfect. But I think life in general, you know, it's, it's not about being perfect. It's about the journey. It's about how do you get to where you want to be? And, and guess what? Life is messy. And it's sometimes in that imperfection that it's the most beautiful. It's, you know, you're walking out to the car. And I always use this example because it's one of my favorite moments with, with my daughter. Um, after I'd gone through cancer, I kind of learned to appreciate those small moments a little bit more. We were kind of rushing out of the house and we were late for her preschool class and, and whatnot. And, and she sees a bug. Well, there's 10 minutes right there. <laughs> so she sees a bug. We've got to check out the bug. We've got to touch the bug and pick up the bug and, you know, all of these things. And so we're late. It's not going to be the end of the world. But that moment with her is something I'll never forget. Just mm -hmm. that minutes of pure joy. And so I think a lot of times we put so much pressure on ourselves as moms to do everything perfectly. And we forget to enjoy the messy part along the way. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to hear actually that the book is more of a memoir because people thrive on story. Like at the end of this interview, people are going to remember the two bugs and the image of her son <laughs> looking back in the race and, and they'll remember the lessons from that, but they're probably not going to, you know, just remember just us like talking at them. So my guess is that your, your story and your memoir teaches a lot of really valuable lessons and we, and we can tell those stories to our kids in order to, you know, teach them their lessons. Um, and so Shannon Miller Lifestyle, you talk about health and we, we kind of touched on this, how health is something we do need to measure, but it's a little bit fluid. It's something we're always kind of choosing. And um, why, is, why is moderation a piece of that for you that you really focus on? I really focus. So I started my company in 2010 and it was really um, having a focus on helping women make their health a priority. So it's not about having the perfect diet or the perfect workout regimen. It's it's for the mom that works two jobs and she's desperately trying to also be healthy along the way. And just kind of understanding that taking time for yourself, taking time to be healthy, um, you should not feel guilty about that. And I think so we many of us put ourselves last. Yeah. We put ourselves last, and I, I watched my mother do it for years. I watched other women in my life do it for years, and um, I began to do it myself, and I realized that, you know, it's not a selfish act to want to take care of our health, and, and through my cancer journey, I realized more than ever that, you know, if we don't take care of our own health, we, we might not be here to take care of all of those that depend on us, whether it's being fit and, and healthy enough to go out and throw the ball with your kids or, or run with them. Um, we have, we have um, a, a foundation as well that deals with childhood obesity uh, that I started in 2007. And some of the stories we received um, through this, we, we, it's a running club. So we have a little over 8,000 children uh, in Florida in this running club. And, um, and it's fantastic, but we heard from some uh, one mother, I'll never forget, I'll just tell you her story. So she wrote us and she said, my son wanted to do this. And he, they run a certain amount and then there's a big race at the end where they get to finish a full marathon. And he said he wanted to do that. And she said, but I, I wasn't, I couldn't even make it to the end of the block with him. I was so out of shape, so overweight, and I just couldn't do it. And so I started, training with him and I started training a little bit on the side so I could keep up with him 
And she said, you know, by the end of it, she was able to run with him. And she actually ended up the next year running a full marathon herself. Like 26 <laughs> mile, the full marathon marathon? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, not the kids. The kids run um, oh, okay. 26 up and two, and then they run the last portion on the day of the race. But um, but no, but she then ran a full marathon. So it's incredible. It's amazing how we can learn from our kids and our kids can learn from us. But the focus is on nutrition. It's on fitness. It's on well-being. It's taking time for yourself and getting to your doctor's appointments. And really what it is is just a nice reminder and some tips on how you can take care of yourself. So you know what? If you don't have 45 minutes to go to a gym, guess what? We have 10-minute fitness videos that are free, and you can just do 10 minutes. Do 10 minutes three times a day, and boom, there you've got your 30. And do that most days of the week, and you're good to go. So there's some things that we do, but we also do a lot with cancer awareness, um, of course. Of it, And we just wanted to make sure that people understood the importance of making their health uh, a priority. Very nice. So, oh, those 10-minute videos, those are for back, okay. adults. Pardon? The 10-minute videos, those are for adults? To fit Those are for day. adults. Yeah, so that's all for women. And um, and then you asked about moderation. Moderation for me came out of really my college days. I um, I started taking collegiate courses while I was training for the 96 Olympics. And then when that Olympics was over, I, I went full time to college, um, moved onto campus and was not taking as great a care of myself as as I, I should have been. But I was still eating six full meals a day that I would have for you know six or seven hours a day training but i wasn't training <laughs> and that oh. that matter work out so um i gained about four dress sizes pretty quick and didn't really know how to handle it i had never had to watch what i ate before um i had never had to think about an exercise regimen because i was just doing gymnastics so i had to start thinking about it and at first i made a lot of mistakes and and one of them was i decided oh i'll, I'll give up sugar i'll give up chocolate and then I ate everything in the house and went and bought chocolate. <laughs> so mm -hmm. to me was kind of that instant um, kind of understanding that I did not possess the willpower, uh, like many women, to, to completely cut things out of my diet. But what I did realize was I could work on portion size. So all I did was change my portion sizes. And it's worked ever since. And so we really focus on everything in moderation, whether it's exercise, whether it's diet, whatever that is. Um, just focus on portion sizes, focus on um, just getting some exercise in each day. It doesn't have to be in a gym, it doesn't have to be a, a certain class, but just get something active in each day. And at least that's a little bit of something. And I think a lot of times we get so overwhelmed. It's, you know, we want to run a 5K or a half marathon. Well, we can't even get off the couch because it's such an enormous goal that we just kind of talk ourselves out of it instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to put on my sneakers. I'm going to go, I'm going to go around the block. I'm going to go around the block once. I can do that. And then you go around the block once and you feel like I might be able to go around the block again. Let's do this. So I think yeah. kind of easing people into the importance of health without making it um, so difficult that they don't get started. Love that. Yeah. Do what you can instead of worrying about doing everything or worrying about everything you can't do. Right. Just take Again, those small baby steps. It's not about perfect. It's not about the perfect diet or the perfect exercise regimen. Just do something. Absolutely. And then would you say, if we're talking about our kids, I mean, obviously the earlier the better for healthy habits. Do you have any kind of best healthy habits that you like to see parents start their kids off doing? Oh, my goodness. I always get nervous at asking, um, answering parenting questions because um, clearly I am learning as I go, just like every other we're, mom. Out. We're all doing it, right? That's how we, we just talk and share ideas with each other as parents. But, um, you know, I think a few of the things that I do um, are certainly I try not to. And I was able to avoid it with my son for a long time until he got into school. But we never talked about vegetables as a bad thing. And so he really didn't understand it as oh vegetables oh sugar it was just kind of food was food and um and that really helped for a, for a while and then he got started in school and then vegetables became off limits but i just serve them i serve them uh, as much as possible and i ask if they'd like to try things and we really talk about trying new things and we do this because i am such a poor eater i I don't like vegetables. I have never liked vegetables. Um, there's a few that, that I'll eat now. I know it's, I'm, I'm horrible. But 
but I learned that about myself. And so I've worked on it. I, mm -hmm. I've kind of, and actually with my kids, okay, mom's never had this. So let's try it. Let's all try it together and, and tell me what you like and tell me what could change, what we could make better. And, and maybe we get in the kitchen and I get them involved with making dinner and then they want to eat it because they made it and they want you to eat it because they made it. And so then it just kind of opens the, the conversation a little bit. Um, but I do, I do fight the urge to serve the same things each day because I'm also not a great chef. But, um, you know, we try. And vegetables, that's one thing. I think the sugar intake is, is really tough for me because there's so much more of it available now. And the one thing I constantly fight is, you know, if I want to give them some sugar, if I want to, you know, bake cookies, some of my favorite memories are, are baking cookies with my mother. And I loved that. And I want to do that with my children. But then I found out that they've already had like four portions of sugar already, whether it was at school or, um, you know, you, you go by the dry cleaners and they hand them a sucker and then you go to the bank and they've got a lollipop yep. and then you go, you know, it's, it's everywhere. And so trying to just keep a handle on, how much sugar they're getting when I'm not around. So I kind of know how to balance that with what I want to give them has been a little bit challenging. Yeah, no, I love what you say. Number one, you're being intentional. You're thinking about it. And I think that's like 80% of the battle, at least that spirit of adventure and then being the example. I mean, parents have right. to know, like, even though you're challenging your own palate and challenging your own tendencies, that's so good for kids to see you in the struggle. I think I think it helps them understand that it's it's not always easy, but it's it can be fun. Um, but the other thing that I, I also talk to them about is portion size, because, you know, these days the serving sizes are so enormous. And so we talk about the fact that, no, we're not getting a big old bag of chips and just eating out of it. No, I, we'll give, put a portion size in a bowl and, and this is what the portion size is and, and have at it. But we don't just sit there with a big old thing. Um, what, of whatever it is and just kind of munch away. And so we try not to do mindless eating um, where you, know, you just kind of fill in your body with calories. We do want to practice intentional eating, sitting down for dinner, talking and communicating. Uh, we don't do electronics at the table ever. That's my biggest absolute no-no. I can't stand it. So I want them talking. I want them making eye contact and, and then really kind of focusing on eating and what they're putting in their bodies. And we talk a lot about fueling our body for success. So it's fuel. And so what do we want to fuel our body with? If you're about to go um, swim for an hour, do you want to have a bunch of sugar or do you want to think about having some protein? And why would protein work better? Why would protein and some carbs be a better match for this, this really long, um, very physical experience that you're about to go to? And so we kind of talk through how food helps our body work. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And I think that is, you know, I always like to end with a message of hope. And I would say that is our message of hope for parents as, as moms in the trenches is that, that you can do it, you know, that you can take some baby steps and be intentional about food, be intentional about exercise, talk to your kids about all the positive things um, and not the, you know, not the no-nos, not the things we can't do and just keep them constantly in conversation and listening to their own bodies and, that's that's where I think, and it sounds like you agree, that we really build those healthy habits in our kids. I think we do. And I think, you know, for a long time, I'm not sure I even gave um, our kids enough credit for all the things that they know and they can learn so easily. And my son, I had to dart out um, really quick one day to, to run over to the store. And my husband was home um, with my daughter. And, and so my son was just kind of like finishing some homework and whatnot. I was gone for about 15 minutes, came back. He had made dinner for the family all by himself just decided oh. he was getting dinner now granted it was you know it was a kid dinner but <laughs> but it was i mean he made a whole meal by himself and all of a sudden i realized now wait a second he can do this so i can actually i can have him do more i i can put more on him because he can handle it and that was a big a big wake-up call for me Mm -hmm. We hear that a lot, too, from our members at Kids Cook Real Food, that not only are kids surprising in what they can handle, but it really fills them up. Like, this is how we build genuine self-esteem, is allowing a child to create and try and fail and do things in the kitchen and then serve it to their family. Like, there's no more authentic gift to other people than food, because we all eat and we love that food and that conversation. So, you know, to be a part of that creation is a beautiful thing for kids. And uh, so I, it's my new goal for you, Shannon, we're going to chat after this, I think, to get 
to get those beautiful memories that used to be around cookies around like chef's knives and vegetables. So we'll get we'll get our class in your hands and I and I can't wait to hear how it goes. Um, definitely, you guys, what a treat to have Shannon Miller here today. Look up her book. It's not wait, I'm gonna say that wrong. It's not about perfect. Um, look up Shannon Miller Lifestyle. We'll have all the links below this video anywhere we share it. And uh, and I think she's just really uh, a a voice of balance for us, a voice of moderation, a voice of encouragement for all of us moms in our busy lifestyles to make sure that we are taking care of our own health for the good of our families. That's that's definitely how it works. So thank you again for being here, Shannon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. And everyone come back next week for more tips about being a great parent, raising amazing children, being healthy, recipe demonstrations, and expert interviews.